Let me show you how we can get rid of these people in front of this church using only Lightroom for the editing. Plus, we're also going to edit the whole thing. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. We want to clean up this shot. Therefore, we are heading in to uh, the remove tool. And there we have a few options. We could use the heel brush, which I'm usually using for sensor spots and other smaller things. But since we want to remove complex objects, we're going to use the remove mode right here. Within the remove mode, it's very important to use the generative AI, which is like Photoshop's generative fill. And thus it will just get rid of objects more easily. I'm also activating the detect objects checkbox, which automatically detects objects when scribbling over or circling them. So right away, we don't need to set up anything besides maybe the brush size. I'm just using the mouse wheel to make it a little bigger. Then I'm going to roughly paint over the first person right here. Very important to leave a little bit of room. So don't be too precise, just roughly brush over this person. You see Lightroom will detect something here which should be fine. I'm going to brush over the second person right away, just like this. And let's see if Lightroom will recognize anything. It doesn't seem so. But anyway, let's try to get rid of them. All we need to do now is to click on that remove button on the right side. This might take a while. Let's hope the outcome will be worth it. And sometimes Lightroom will add funny things to images like this super tiny person, but don't worry about it. I'm going to click on this selection and then we need to change the variation. Lightroom will give us three different variations. Just click through them. I'm going to click on this arrow icon right here and you can see this tiny person has disappeared. Perfect. And now we have a cleaned up image with just a bunch of clicks. Of course, we can continue cleaning up the shot because there are more things that are kind of distracting. Let's get rid of these signs on the far left side. Again, I'm just clicking on the remove button to get rid of them. This is looking great. Now there's also this pole right here next to the church, which I think is super distracting. In this case, I don't want to use the detect objects checkbox because it's kind of hard to separate from the background and Lightroom will not be able to do that. So let's deactivate this option and then I'm just going to brush over this thing. Let's see if the remove tool can handle this. Let's click on remove. That's looking pretty good. There is some kind of fence on the far right side, which I also want to remove, but I'm using the heel brush for that. Lightroom shouldn't have any issues getting rid of this. Here I'm doing this in a little more precise way since the heel brush isn't that perfect. Let's see what this will do and this looks pretty good. Now if there are areas that are starting to look funny I'm just brushing over them once more and hopefully Lightroom will fix it but as you can see so far we don't have any issues. It just takes a bit of time. If you want to have faster and more precise results of course I always suggest to use Photoshop but as you can see in this case, if you have the time, it's completely doable in Lightroom. Wonderful. And that is the cleaned up image. Now that we have removed the distracting stuff, let's also edit this shot, of course. I'm going to start on the basic panel and right away, let's change the profile to Adobe Standard to lessen the overall contrast, which in turn gives us more control over that. I want to give this image a very clear and sharp look. I'm going to start this by bringing down the exposure just to have a little more details in the brightest spots. I'm also going to bring down the shadows, which will push the contrast. Then let's bring up the whites, further pushing the contrast this way. And as we take a look at this again, you can see there is a little bit of clipping in the darkest parts right in the foreground. I really don't want to have that. So I'm going to bring up the blacks just to kind of fix that. And that's looking like a pretty good exposure. I also want to work on a white balance. I think this image could use a little more warmth since this was shot during the late afternoon. I want to introduce that light from that hour of the day. So let's bring up the temperature like this. Okay, I'm also going to bring up the texture to make this image look sharper. I'm going to bring up the clarity for midtones contrast. I'm actually going to bring down the dehaze. This is a little bit counterintuitive since it will reduce the contrast and it will make the background in the distance look softer. 
However, I think as a base, that's pretty good. All right, let's also bring up the vibrance since I want to see some colors in here and that's it for the basic adjustments. So let's compare to before real quick. You see, it's looking much cleaner without those guys in the foreground and the whole shot looks much better due to the adjusted white balance and the base adjustments. Now let's take a look at a few more areas locally with a bit of masking. So there are a few areas on which I want to focus. We have the background, we have the foreground, we have the sky and we have this plane right behind the subject. This is what I want to make brighter so let me target it. I'm going to use a linear gradient and I kind of want to target this plain field in the background like this. No, I don't want to affect the foreground, so I'm going to subtract the linear gradient, getting rid of the foreground this way. Of course, right now we are overlapping the subject, so let's subtract, and I'm going to use the objects mask, make sure the rectangle select mode is active, and I'm drawing a rectangle around that church, and we get a perfect selection for the thing we want to adjust. So let's bring up the exposure. This way I kind of want to add this light effect. I'm going to raise the shadows as well quite a bit. And let's also bring up the temperature, making it look like the light is hitting that spot in particular. Wonderful, that's looking good. Now right away I want to work on the background. Again, I'm using a linear gradient, roughly selecting kind of all of the background like this. Again, we need to get rid of the subject from this mask. So again, the subject, object, draw a rectangle around it, and we are done creating this mask. For the background, I wanna add a little more punch, and I'm starting this by bringing down the exposure very gently. At the moment, it's still a little bit hazy, and we can change that by playing around with the contrast. So let's increase the global contrast slider right here. But we can also bring down the shadows for more contrast. This works really good, as you can see. And we can also bring down the blacks for the very darkest parts of the background. And just like this, the mountains became more visible. I do want to further work on the contrast of these mountains. I'm going to use a color range mask. And let me click right in here on the rock faces. You see, this will nicely target these areas because the contrast between the rock faces and the snow is that high. But of course we have selected way too much, so I need to subtract a few things. I'm going to start subtracting an object's mask, getting rid of the church. Then we need to subtract a linear gradient, getting rid of all of that foreground. And the sky is selected as well, so I might subtract a sky mask. Let's see if this works. That's looking pretty good. I still want to further refine the color range mask. So I'm using the refine slider and just slightly bring it down like this to only really affect those mountains. And again, I'm making use of contrast to add some punch in here. And let's bring down the blacks. Okay, the left side is looking good. The right side is still lacking a bit of contrast. I'm using another color range mask and let's click right in here. This time I'm clicking on those red dots, choose intersect mask with and go with the brush. So that means I can just brush over the areas I wanna change since you're intersecting with the color range mask and uh, we end up with this selection. That looks pretty good. Now let's bring up the contrast once more and bring down the blacks. All right, perfect. Of course, we also want to work on the foreground. At the moment, you can see it's kind of dark, especially in the darker areas. So let's use a linear gradient targeting all of that foreground. Again, we don't want to affect the subject, so we need to subtract an object's mask, draw the rectangle, and done. Now, what I want to do is to bring up the exposure, making the foreground a little bit brighter. I also want to raise the shadows. And let's raise the blacks to fix the darkest areas. I might as well bring up the whites just a bit. Okay, this is looking much, much better. Now, one more thing I want to do with the masking. I want to use an object's mask and target a subject because we can work on that as well, of course. I also want to give it more punch, so let's start with a bit of contrast. I really like how this dark black looks in front of these brighter mountains in the back. That's perfect. I think we can introduce a bit of white as well for even more contrast. And let's add texture and clarity. Wonderful. 
So that's it for the masking adjustments. I can deactivate all the masks so we can see the transformation from before to after. Especially the background looks much, much better in my opinion. I like when it's clear and sharp like this. Of course, that's a personal design choice. You could also go with the hazy look in the background, of course, if you want. Now let's also do some color grading and I'm going to shift the colors quite a bit. I'm going to start in the color mixer with the hue. What I don't like is the blues of the sky and the yellows of the foreground. These are the tones I want to adjust. So let's start with blue. Bringing down the blue hue will give us more cyan tones in the sky, which I think looks great for this scene. Just like this. Then I'm also going to bring down the yellow hue, shifting the, the warmer tones of the foreground more into the orange color range. All right, then let's bring down orange as well just because I think it looks good. We might want to change the saturation as well. Uh, let me see, I wanna bring up orange just a little bit and let's bring down the blue saturation. Okay, that's much better looking. Now let's do a bit of split toning in the color grading panel. I just want to add a little hint of warmth to the highlights. So let's set up the hue want to go for a golden hour color right around here. And let's bring up the saturation. Just a little bit, don't overdo it. Finally, let's open up the calibration tab. And as always, I'm going to bring down the blue Burnberry hue. This will further shift the blue tones of the sky into the aqua color range. And I'm also going to bring up the saturation. Okay, this is looking awesome. We're almost done, just the sharpening left. Let's open up the details panel, bring down the radius, increase the details, hold on the R key while adjusting the masking slider, and let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Okay, now there are actually a few sensor spots left in this image. Let's clean them up in Lightroom as well. Again, I'm going to head into the remove tool, use the heel brush, make sure to click on visualize spots so we can see all these sensor spots, and then I'm just starting to brush over them one by one. And there we have the cleat up image, all done using only Lightroom for the editing. So I hope this little tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have questions left or if you want to add anything, feel free to write a comment on this video. And thank you so much for watching it.